direction is the biggest offset to anxiety and depression. Feeling lost is something that I'm sure you can relate to, but that quote that I shared in the beginning has developed into a method that I use every single time that I feel lost and it works every single time. Sort of developed a little trick or technique or an antidote to that lost feeling. And in this video, I'm gonna share that with you. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Like the quote said earlier, direction is really the key here. Similar to how you would handle the situation if you were lost physically. When you feel lost in life, you need to gain clarity on where you're actually going. Defining anxiety as not knowing where you're going or where you are or what your next steps are has been a really beneficial way to operationalize the cure. And I think Alex Hermosi says something along the same lines as that. The first and most painful step in the process of gaining clarity is getting clarity on what your destination is. What do you actually want? The painful part comes when you ask why. What are you actually aiming for? Come up with a goal that you have, if you have one. And if you don't have a goal, pick something in your life that you don't like and decide to aim for the opposite. Once you have that goal in mind, you need to ask yourself, why do I value this? What's the point in achieving this? And continue to ask yourself why. Continue to dig deeper. You need to have a core reason for chasing your goal. It cannot be a dollar amount or a specific percent body fat. There has to be something deeper, but you need to understand how to ask the right why. Let's say your goal is you wanna make a million dollars and you ask yourself why, and you're like, because I wanna buy a luxury car. The next why is not, why do you want to buy an Audi R8? That is not the correct why. The next why is, why do you want an expensive car? You can see that it's very easy to fall into the trap of asking about the specifics of the goal rather than asking about the motivations and values behind the goal. You want to go deeper, you don't want to be more specific about the shallow. Now that you've gained a little bit of momentum, a little bit of a direction, the next step is figuring out where you are. Where are you struggling? What are your limiting factors? This is where complete subordination to the truth really comes into play. Here are some questions that I like to ask myself. What are my biggest limiting factors? Am I the cause of these limiting factors? The answer is yes. What reasons for the circumstances am I not able to accept when it comes to where I'm at in life? What are the reasons I'm doing what I do on a day-to-day -day basis? Essentially, like in the previous step, just gaining clarity on motivation and values, developing mindfulness and asking yourself why in the midst of your day before interactions with anyone or anything is huge. Some more questions might be, what is required to transition into a new season? What is required to achieve my goals? What would I have to do and what would make it unreasonable for me to not achieve my goals? And then you kind of want to attack the presuppositions you hold. What questions am I not willing to ask myself? What truths am I avoiding? What conversations do I need to have that I haven't yet? What relationships do I need to get rid of? What things should I focus on that I've convinced myself are not necessary? And what things should I stop focusing on that I've convinced myself are. Not only do you want to gain clarity in an honest way, but you want to attack the frame of your worldview. You want to understand the tint through which you see the world. A couple other questions that I'm going to be personally asking myself is, what would an ideal day for me look like? What do I want my brand to be? Ask yourself questions that make you uncomfortable and don't wait until you have motivation to start gaining clarity. Motivation comes from purpose. Purpose comes from having a direction, having a purpose. Having a direction comes from clarity. You can start anywhere in the cycle, but it doesn't really make sense to wait for motivation. Gaining clarity is really my point here. That's really the big key technique. When you feel lost, it's virtually always to a lack of clarity and intention. I've done this. You might know some people who, when they get stressed, they write out lists. I used to write out these maps of my entire life with lines and bubbles towards each sector of my life, meticulously, neurotically jotting down every part of my life. And once I got an entire scope on a piece of paper of everything that was going on, I felt a lot less anxious. I felt like I had a lot more control over my life because I actually knew what was happening. Just knowing where you are doesn't always fix the problem. And that's why I led with figuring out where you want to go. I can't state the value of gaining clarity continuously. And so that's why I also want to mention 
these. I carry around pocket notebooks and I've been doing this for a hot minute now. And they're actually pretty incredible. Not only is it a nicer way to be able to jot down like quotes or stuff that you're learning from a podcast or book or movie recommendations or songs in a way that there's no distractions, you're not gonna lose your train of focus. Whenever I have a question or a cope that I need to confront in that moment, I can just whip this out and it acts as an emergency, like in use case, journal. There's probably other benefits to it as well, but being able to make lists and gain clarity at any point in real time on paper has kind of been a game changer. Here we are. You've gained clarity. One more final point that is so massive. Progress is the biggest motivator. A lot of times you see young men getting onto self-improvement from the gym. They start going to the gym, they get addicted to it, and it begs the question, why? Why does going to the gym inherently translate to the desire to improve the rest of your life? The reason is because you can see controllable and noticeable progress. Until you come to the realization in your mind that you can actually make progress in your life, you'll never truly understand motivation. In hopes to earn love, respect, and trust from the person that it's hardest to earn it from, which is yourself, you wanna start building up a stack of proof. Start doing things that you can see noticeable, controllable progress in. Start going to the gym, start increasing your intelligence, start saving money. Actually taking action is the biggest motivator. You never, ever, 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 ever get out of a rut by staying in the rut willingly. Until I realized that the only way to feel motivated was to act as if I were, I was beholden to this horrible cycle of complacency. Quick bursts of passion, then slumps, then quick bursts of passion, then slumps. Once you start taking action and doing things that create noticeable progress, notice it. Make it clear to yourself. Be proud of the little bit that you've done and specifically understand, deeply understand how what you've done and the progress that you've made relates to you accomplishing your goals and relates to you getting one step closer to your core goal. Progress is the biggest motivator. That's something I learned from Hamza and it's so true. It's so fundamental and seemingly so obvious, but once you actually digest that, that's a new way to live. In reality, the key to stop feeling lost, if I had to sum it up, is to gain clarity, set intention, and then take action whether you feel like it or not. And I know that doesn't make anything feel better in the moment. My goal is not to do that. My goal is to tell you how to stop feeling lost. I hope this video gave you value. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.